COVID-19 infections surged by 400% in the first nine days of June compared to the same period in May. The cases soared from 225 in the first eight days of May to a high of 900 positive cases during the same period this month. The spike in numbers now forcing the government to implement a rushed home-based care program without adhering to the laid-out protocol. Already 95 people have been allowed to self-isolate themselves at home in disregard to their inability to observe these requirements. And as Temutai Goin reports the country's confirmed cases inch closer to the 3,000 mark as 124 more cases were reported. The country's fragile health systems are slowly reaching breaking point as the number of COVID-19 infections continue to rise and as the government anticipates a spike in the numbers as it ramps up testing, it has started implementing home-based care for suspected COVID cases but without sticking to the laid out protocol. Our epidemiological curve is rising sharply in many of our regions. For one to be put under the home-based care program, the protocol requires that one must have either been confirmed to be COVID-19 positive, be asymptomatic or have mild symptoms, must not have a pre-existing condition, and they must have access to suitable space for home-based care. The room must be well ventilated, limited number of caregivers, Household members should stay in a different room and there should be limited visitors save for the caregiver. The question is how will this be implemented in informal settlements and other poor neighborhoods when this pose a risk to other members of the public and lead to a spike in the number of infections? So far, 95 people have been put under the program. However, some of them are anxious. With limited space to self-quarantine, they run the risk of infecting not only just close family but other members of the public. For instance, patient X, who spoke to Citizen TV, stays in Kamulu. When discharged, he was simply told to go home and report to authorities if the situation wasn't. He does not have a personal car. He then boarded a public vehicle to go home. Does this then make the stringent containment measures and exercise in futility? Asymptomatic, if they turn out to be uh, of low risk, then we can be able to remove them from somewhere we are now keeping them, which is in health facilities, and think of alternatives that will then free up those facilities for those who need those cl uh, clinical uh, management facilities. The looming crisis worsened by the fact that the country could not ascertain the state of over 5,000 people whose samples could not be processed for lack of reagents. For example, six of Bishop Margaret Wenjero's staff who remained in hospital after she was declared COVID-19 free were released yesterday without any tests. She has had to take them to a private facility for testing. The bishop was also forced to house two of them within her compound as they do not have isolation space in their homes. Out of the 2,247 samples tested in the last 24 hours that yielded 124 positive cases pushing the total confirmed cases to 2,898, most of the samples were processed in private facilities. Lancet, for instance, processed 601 samples. Aga Khan University Hospital, 339. Government facilities like the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, 96. Coast Provincial General Hospital, 94. Nairobi West Hospital, 53. Quite telling on the reagents crisis is that Cambridge, Nairobi, Cambridge, Nairobi HIV Lab and the Kenyatta National Hospital did not carry out any tests. But as the government insists it's not getting its food off the gas, the safety of Kenyans amid the rushed implementation of the home-based care program remains a worrying concern. Chamutai Goin, Citizen TV.